start with the first thing, which is the use of m and &E frameworks uh, in designing and understanding uh, programs. Um, this is something that we need to be able to uh, be able to look at. We will tie our discussion today uh, to m and &E frameworks and um, uh, we will see uh, what to be able to put uh, for the next discussion uh, so that we can also um, uh, we can also be able to add on that. Uh, a framework generally, uh, uh, without even just defining, um, uh, without even defining an M&E framework, if you're talking about a framework, framework uh, is normally defined as a structure uh, for supporting or enclosing something. And, and, and it's always good to begin at this point because uh, we need to understand that uh, frameworks uh, will always be there. And uh, uh, they're simply there to be able to uh, give us a structure uh, for ensuring that something is supported or something is enclosed uh, as much as possible. And, um, and uh, the other thing is that um, uh, when now we talk about an m and &E framework, uh, we are saying an m and &E framework uh, will focus its attention and resources on the project or program operations and uh, key results uh, for purposes of learning, for purposes of improvement, and for purposes of communication uh, to the project or program stakeholders as expected. So, uh, so the m and &E framework uh, is very, very useful uh, in terms of ensuring that the resources on the project and program operations and key results um, uh, are useful uh, for purposes of learning uh, for purposes of improvement and for purposes of communication uh, to the project um, and uh, program stakeholders. And so therefore, it is therefore important uh, to make sure uh, that we're able to have a clear uh, m and &E framework <coughs> is, is agreed among the key stakeholders uh, at the end of the planning stage uh, so that we can be able to undertake monitoring and evaluation very, very successfully. So it's important to make sure that uh, uh, stakeholders can actually agree on the m and &E framework uh, that will actually be used to undertake monitoring and evaluation successfully uh, as much as possible. So it's always good to make sure that you can bring uh, the, uh, the stakeholders together uh, so that we can be able to ensure that we can undertake uh, the monitoring and evaluation uh, successfully. Uh, as possible. Then again, another thing is that um, an m and &E framework uh, should actually be able to clarify, uh, should be able to clarify a number of things. And so uh, m and &E framework should clarify uh, quite a number of things that we should be able to consider. And um, one of the things that we should be able to clarify uh, using an m and &E framework is um, uh, what, what are some of the results uh, that we need to be able to monitor and evaluate? And that's something that um, uh, is important uh, to, be able to, uh, to be able to clarify uh, what are the results uh, that should actually... So, so, so the first question is what results uh, that needs to be monitored and evaluated? And so uh, as you're putting up uh, an m and &E framework, then um, that becomes very, very important to be able to clarify. Now, the other one is also considering uh, what activities are supposed to be monitored and evaluated. Uh, that's the next consideration that you put in place. Uh, what activities uh, do you have to monitor and evaluate? Uh, it's another uh, critical question that you should also be able to address. And then the other thing is what is the timing, what are the methods, what are the resources, what are the responsibility uh, for the activities that actually need to be monitored and evaluated. So, so those are some of the things that we uh, need to be able to uh, clarify uh, using the &E framework. And that's why the matrix uh, should be able to capture some of these components in terms of what are the results, what are the indicators, uh, what are the activities that actually need to um, happen in terms of monitoring and evaluation, and what is the timing, what is the methods that are going to use, what are the resources that are going to be used, and who will be responsible uh, to ensure that the m &E activities are actually conducted 
uh, as expected. So it's good to be able to uh, understand that. Now, now a framework and most of those components uh, in MNE framework uh, that we need to be able to look at, and that is um, uh, the frameworks uh, that we actually need to be able to uh, to utilize as well. So, uh, so components. Uh, so first is um, uh, we have the narrative component and. Um, uh, the narrative component uh, basically describes how the partners uh, will actually uh, be able to undertake monitoring and evaluation. And so uh, this basically the narrative component uh, simply describes how uh, the different partners will be able to undertake monitoring and evaluation. And then the other thing is uh, what we are calling the results framework. And the results framework uh, uh, basically ensures that um, uh, we are able to prepare uh, the same uh, in the planning stage. And this is uh, this basically uh, describes the specific results that we actually need to be able to realize uh, in a project or program. And so the results uh, framework uh, is also the component of uh, the framework as well. And um, the other thing is also the planning. Uh, the planning uh, matrices uh, also uh, is part of uh, the component for the m and &E framework uh, that basically uh, shows what are the consolidated, uh, what are the strategic steps uh, for monitoring and evaluation activities for easy reference. So in other words, if you pick an m and &E, uh, framework, you should be able to see uh, what are some of the steps that um, have been put in place in terms of uh, showing the steps that will be used for monitoring and evaluation. And this is done so that uh, we can have an easy reference uh, in terms of what we should be able to do uh, when it comes to monitoring and evaluation. So, uh, so it is important um, um, uh, to be able to uh, look um, uh, to look at this. So, uh, so this is something that um, uh, we need to be able to familiarize ourselves and um, uh, it's something that um, uh, we need to be able to understand that uh, as much as possible. So, uh, so planning matrices, uh, therefore, uh, is very, very useful for showing the consolidated and the strategic steps for monitoring and evaluation activities. Uh, so that we can be able to have um, uh, easy, uh, easy referencing as expected. Now, the other thing that is important, uh, apart from just the three uh, different components of the m and &E framework, uh, is also it is important that we understand that m and &E frameworks are not cast in stone. Uh, so in other words, what do we mean when we say they are not cast in stone? So we are saying that uh, uh, these are things that can be revised. Uh, these are things that can be reviewed. And these are things that can be updated uh, regularly. And so it is important to make sure that um, uh, we can actually be able to review them. We can also be able to update them as regularly as possible. And so that's basically what uh, we have uh, when you talk about um, the m and &E framework. So we should be able to review uh, we should be able to update as regularly as as we can so so that we are able to uh, ensure uh, that we're able to uh, uh, undertake this as much as possible now the other thing is that um, uh, the m and &E framework are an integral component of the project management and also program management so uh, so the frameworks are very very critical uh, for project management and for program management. And so it is important to make sure that um, uh, we are able to have uh, very, very, uh, um, uh, we're able to look at uh, m and frameworks as, as very integral uh, components mm -hmm. of project management and program uh, management as, as expected. Again, also, um, uh, the other thing is that uh, m and &E frameworks uh, should actually be used throughout the program or project cycle. And so it is important to make sure that we can actually be able to use uh, the program or project uh, cycle uh, as much as possible. And so it is important uh, to ensure that they, they can actually uh, be used uh, throughout, <coughs> throughout the program. 
uh, cycle or throughout the project uh, cycle uh, as expected. Uh, then uh, the other thing is um, uh, the program level framework uh, basically also uh, builds upon the project level framework. And so uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, uh, the program level framework uh, basically builds upon the project level framework. And so uh, it is important uh, to ensure that uh, uh, we are able to uh, we are able to do that uh, as much as, as as possible. So, uh, so it is important to ensure that um, uh, we can actually be able to have uh, the uh, program level framework, uh, building upon the project level framework uh, as much as 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 possible. And so, the other thing is that um, uh, the basically key elements uh, in a results framework. Uh, so they are. Uh, certain key elements uh, that we need to be able to see uh, in a results framework. And so uh, uh, what are some of those uh, key elements uh, that are there uh, in a results framework? So one is the goal statement. And so it is important uh, to make sure that um, we are able to recognize uh, some of the key elements uh, in a results framework. and. Um, uh, what are some of those uh, key elements is, uh, for instance, uh, we need to be able to have our goal statement or rather some people also call this the impact statement. Uh, that is, uh, for example, what are the change in the health conditions uh, that we actually hope to be able to achieve uh, in a project or program. Uh, then again, also, there will be a place where you can also indicate um, your strategic objectives. Uh, that is, uh, what is the main result that will help us uh, be able to achieve our goal uh, for which we can actually be able to measure change. And then again, um, you will also uh, go ahead and have uh, intermediate results. But I need to mention something uh, just as I, I move on. Um, uh, why we, we have this here uh, is that uh, um, uh, ahead, when I'm trying to look at the different types of um, results framework, uh, you will actually see certain results frameworks don't state their elements as you can see right now. It's only that um, uh, when you talk about a results framework, which is a very specific type of an ME framework, then that's why it will be able to have this kind of uh, uh, nominal elements uh, in it. So this is very, very specific. Uh, to the type of m and &E framework we refer to as the results framework. So it will be able to state uh, its key elements as follows. And um, uh, so I had uh, mentioned about the strategic objectives. Now I can also uh, be able to mention the intermediate results, basically uh, being the things that actually need to be done uh, to make sure that the strategic objectives are actually achieved. So, um, so, so, so people who will use this terminology uh, especially uh, the people who work with USA, the type of programming, uh, I know you are very, very component. Uh, you're very, very um, uh, comfortable uh, with some of these, um, uh, with some of these terms, because uh, this is something that um, is highly utilized by the USAID programming. So, so for some of us uh, who are managing projects for USA um, as a donor, uh, you will be very, very familiar uh, with some of these terminology. Some of us may not because they are dealing with different donors that um, don't emphasize uh, the results framework and uh, work with a different type of a framework altogether. But we'll see the different frameworks that are there. So uh, we'll be able to clarify that. Now, uh, the other thing is now, uh, what are the strategies and activities? And so uh, here we are asking ourselves, uh, what the project will actually need to do uh, to be able to achieve uh, the intermediate result that further contributes to the strategic objective. So in other words, we're asking ourselves, what is this activity that is needed to be done so that the intermediate result can be achieved, which will further be able to contribute to the strategic objective uh, further. So, uh, so those are some of the things that we uh, need, to, uh, need to be able to clarify uh, as much as, as, as possible. Now, um, having said that, I think now it's good to move to what I have just mentioned, uh, the issue of the different 
uh, the different types of M&E frameworks that you can, you can always be able to find. And uh, uh, I think it is good <coughs> if we can actually be able to look at um, uh, the different uh, uh, M&E uh, frameworks that are there and uh, that we have actually been able to use before. And so it is good uh, to be able to, uh, it is good to be able to look